you can uh, also save them as presets. So for example, you can save a preset for movies or uh, like a film production, or you can save a preset for mixing or hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Homain TV, specifically Cubase for composers. And today I'm gonna tell you how you can modify and change the interface of Cubase. And without further ado, let's go. All right, so you open the program and you have a lot of stuff here, as you can see. But the fun thing in Cubase is that you can modify basically everything in the interface. And by that, uh, I mean that simply, this is the first step that you can actually add or remove the panels, as I told you in the video before. But other than this, all the stuff that you hear, all these tools can be modified. So I'm going to close this now. If you right click here, you have setup toolbar here. And all the stuff that you see here are the things that are in the first line. And all the stuff that you see here, if I right click here, are these, all right? And then same here. So if I right click here, you get the setup transport bar. And these are the stuff that are written here. So I'm going to go through a little bit of these, but my suggestion is that go through, uh, go through this list and see uh, what are the stuff that you think you might need. Some stuff you have no idea what they are and uh, just, just remove it because you're not going to need it. For example, project pan law, you're never going to need it or project frame rate. As long as you're uh, not moving, not working with video projects, you're not going to need this so you can remove it. But let's start here. Um, as you can see here, you have also these uh, boxes here, the tick boxes, and you have this left divider. This is just a divider that you can just simply move. It's an invisible divider. See this thing moving here? Where's the divider? Yeah. Okay. And you can just set it to your liking. And uh, there was uh, this option here, project history, that I removed it already before because I don't need it. So this is the redo and undo. So I don't really need this because I can just use the control Z and uh, control shift and Z. So I just remove it. And, and there are some other stuff that you can just check by yourself. This is not really complicated, but you can just see if it's something that you use or you don't use and you keep it. Usually the first one is quite useful, the first layer. So I will just keep everything here other than the undo redo that I, uh, you know, the project history. But the second one, you can still, for example, if I remove project frame rate, um, record format, you can keep it. But if you know what you're doing, like if you just made the project yourself and um, you, you have already initiated the project, you already know that, okay, this is the sample rate and the bit rate of your project. So you don't really need it. And there are the other stuff, for example, the, this audio input and output, you can keep it because it's good to see the, the routings that are inside Cubase for your audio inputs and outputs. And you have the right divider here as well and the left divider. So you can just divide them as you wish. This really helps to just make the interface a bit more clean. And before I go to the lower one here, you can uh, also save them as presets. So for example, you can save a preset for movies or uh, like a film production, or you can save a preset for mixing or stuff like that. So uh, then it will just change the, the layout of this uh, line here and as you wish. So it's, it's, it's a pretty neat thing, this feature. And now let's go down here. These are also the same. And also it's a good way to learn Cubase because if you don't know it, you can also just Google it and see what, what does it mean. For example, constant uh, delay, uh, constraint delay compensation. You don't really need it if you have a, like a new device, you know, like from the past few years. And uh, you're basically working quite light or even heavy, but with latest uh, VSDs or plugins, you don't really need this. So you can just remove it. And um, there are some other things that you can just go through it. it. I tried to record the video explaining everything, but it takes like an hour or something. But perhaps later I'll come back to it. And uh, so, yeah, this just go through it and see what you like and what you don't like. OK. And as I told you, you have also this feature here that you can close and open the panels. 
and you have some other stuff here. For example, you can open the overview here, which gives you the overview of your project. But my suggestion is that don't keep, don't make it complicated in the beginning, just make everything simple. And uh, now I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open my mixer. Same goes with your mixer. So if you right click anywhere that is nothing there, you can also see a lot of stuff that you might need or you might not need, okay? So for example, the zoom palette, this guy is the, is, a, is the zoom palette here, which it just makes it zoom a bit or smaller. So if you have a small project, you don't really need to zoom in or zoom out or something. So you can just remove it. Usually I have it because uh, if I have like a multiple stuff, I want to just change it and, uh, but it's up to you, okay? And one fun thing that you can add here is the transport button. So for example, if you have an external display or you just want to also be able to control things here, you can as well add the transport button here and just use it and can be quite fun and handy here. Okay, now I'm gonna close this. Now let's see how we can modify the color of the interface because sometimes the, the stock color, you know, the original color can be a bit boring and uh, then we can change it. So for that, just go to edit, come down here to preferences, okay? And then you have, uh, if you go down here, all the way down, you have user interface here. Click on color schemes. And if you go to the right here, you can change the color. You have some default colors. For example, if I click on this, uh, just keep your eyes on the interface, it's gonna change color. And it's really cool. But you can also change the color as you want. So let's see. Exciting stuff. And these are the other colors that you can change. This is the focus color of, of the tracks, project area background, and there are other stuff. So. Basically, like imagine these are the grids, right? These lines, and you can just change the color as you want. I just make it a bit darker, for example, all right? And this is the editor area background. This is where the like the note editing stuff happens with your MIDI. And this is the ruler background. So everything you can modify here. Now I'm gonna reset it. So it goes back to the way it was. And I'm gonna go back to this because it's just easier for now to explain things. And now you have a track type default colors. And these are the colors that are automatically added when you add a certain track. Now, let's see, if I want to change this, for example, well, yeah, okay, effect is nice actually. I'm gonna change it to red, okay? And I'm gonna click on apply and okay. So nothing has happened, right? That is because that features, feature only applies when you add an effect track. So if I add an effect track, add track, you see, it's gonna be red already. So you can have a color coding for yourself already um, that you can uh, just, so you can have a color coding for yourself. So you, perhaps it makes it easier for you to find multiple tracks that you have. But you know, already I told you, you can also change the, the, the color here as well. Um, if you have the track, so just hold control and you can just go up and down with your, with your mouse wheel. This is also a way to change the colors here. Okay, let's go back it here. And you have more options here to change how your mixer looks. This is the original version. This is like the stock version. Mix console section colors. These are the sections, for example, gain, pre-filters, equalizers, and stuff like that. And this is your uh, channel strip in your mixer. And it goes down. Now, this one is a fun thing. This one is an auto track channel color mode. So this is going to automatically change the color of your tracks. And it's really fun. So for example, I'm going to say, whenever I add a new track, use the previous track color plus one. So it's going to add 
a, a little bit of a, I think it's going to be like a, a little bit more saturated. Let's say plus one, I'm going to do and apply and OK. So I'm going to add an instrument track. OK. Now, remember, now this is the default. I didn't, I didn't uh, change anything. OK. Now I'm going to just change this color here. And I add another track. You see? Now it's in the same same world of color. If I add another one. So it's just changing a, a little bit of the, the color here to keep it in the same color area. Let's go back. Okay. And uh, you have also colorized tracks and mix console channels. And uh, this is also a, a way of automatically changing your colors here. So for example, I can say tracks, folder tracks, mix console channels. You can say the color strength, should it be high, less? So let's put it in color strength max and apply. You see, this is also changing the color of the actual track here. So. Uh, my suggestion is that to play with these settings a bit and also you can just modify, check, check what these are to uh, learn by yourself a little bit more because it's just nothing to explain here. It's just something you just have to go through it and learn it by yourself. And in the next video, we're going to be exploring a lot of more cool stuff. So if you are not subscribed yet, please do. And uh, if you have any questions, comments or anything else, leave them in the comments section. Until later. Oh my